Hi, everyone. Welcome to the MRP Tech Podcast. This is episode 174. My name is Matt, and I am the host for this week's episode of the MRP Tech Podcast. Thanks for joining us this week. And if you haven't already, um, go to my website, mrptechreviews.com. That's where I post all of the shows. You can also find the audio versions over at podnuts.com and check out all the other great shows over at Podnuts as well as um, the episodes to this show. You can check out the all of the episodes on YouTube. Uh, You can look for this YouTube channel, MRP Tech Reviews, and check out the MRP Tech Podcast episodes. Uh, Searching them by number, you should find any episode. Up there, just about there's a, there's a couple episodes that um, that I have taken down. Actually, there's one episode I've taken down. I'll talk a little bit about that later on today. Okay, so this week's episode is a an introduction to a project that I have been working on for years, and it's going to go down a rabbit hole a little bit, and hopefully you'll have some fun uh, with this episode, like. I have had uh, researching it. And the point of this episode um, is if you have a topic that you're interested in, don't be afraid to do deep research on it because you're going to find and, and, and things you weren't even expecting from the very beginning. Now, um, the one thing I'm going to say about this is um, I'm sorry I haven't had an episode out over the last few weeks. Um, I had a music festival a couple of weeks ago that I was working hard um, to uh, uh, put together. And then I had a, another concert the following week after that, uh, which is a busy time of year because with professional musicians, there are, are musicals being performed everywhere. Um, so that got me sidetracked. Then shortly after that, I had a cold, and I, I never record uh, when I have a cold because I don't like to listen to podcasts with uh, you know somebody who's sick on it, so I, I don't even bother recording when I'm sick. But the idea here is um, this week's episode is, is a topic that I've been interested in for a super really long time, and um, back early on in this podcast series... Uh, right around episode 64, 65, 66, I did three episodes on uh, some Cold War era history. And I've always been a fan of Cold War era history just because um, I grew up next to a major Air Force base that was um, running for, I don't know, 40, 50 years, something like that. Uh, it closed down in the mid 90s. And um, just growing up with that sort of atmosphere around uh, where I grew up uh, always had me interested in um, the Cold War because this air base that I grew up in was a major uh, strategic air command base in my area. And um, I'm going to talk to you about some things that I, I have done. So so way back, episode 64, 65, 66 of the MRP Tech Podcast, um, I sort of dove deep onto a subject that was interesting uh, from a local perspective here where I'm from but also on, on a, a grander scheme things uh, of things. And um, it's, it's sort of a fascinating story. And um, I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of background as I go along here just to sort of refresh some, some of the memories. If you, if you haven't listened to the show for a while and you haven't heard me talk about this, um, you're kind of in, in for a treat. Um, so basically the story is uh, that um, if you take a look at this enhanced video that I'm, I'm working on. Okay. Um, with this episode, I'm going to put a video out on YouTube, uh, in my area in the 1960s, there were, uh, 12 Atlas missile silos that were built in a rapid succession around Plattsburgh air force base, um, from 1961 to 1962, and it was a big deal because uh, prior to that, uh, obviously in my area, there were uh, no missile silos and it was a big deal. Um, there was a lot of people wondering what that was going to do to the area. Um, many people supported it. Many people voiced their um, 
disapproval of it. And so basically from like 1960 to 1962, there were lots of um, uh, sort of Infor- there was information put out to the public saying these missile silos weren't going to cause any harm to the local area. They weren't going to make the local area a target um, during the Cold War. Uh, it was just to uh, protect uh, and be a deterrent for um, countries like Russia in that, in, that t- in that sense. So there were 12 Atlas missiles that were built in our area. And even before they were built, people were questioning how long they were going to be operational because there was a new missile that was coming out called the Titan missile. And was it worth it to build these at that time? So the equivalent of today's income, I believe each silo costs anywhere from 15 to 18 million dollars a piece. So there's 12 of them that were built. So unbelievably large amounts of money were spent to build these silos. And so they were operational for just about three years. They were decommissioned and then they were basically abandoned. And so they were sold back to uh, local municipalities. They were sold back to uh, landowners for cheap. Uh, And most of these silos, they filled up with water. They were then, uh, they sat in ruin for 60, however many years it's been, even longer than that probably. Yeah, it's about 60 years. And so there were 12 missile silos and they all had numbers, uh, site numbers. And I've been through, I I sort of did this this, uh, story back episode 64, 65, 66. And... Um, these silos back in 2017, I was actually able to tour one of the silos. And um, if you take a look at the map that I'm showing, I'm showing Plattsburgh International Airport. That's the current um, the current location of where Plattsburgh Air Force Base was located. And Plattsburgh International Airport opened in 2000 and I want to say 2009. Um, and it's got a, uh, this is the location of where Plattsburgh Air Force Base was. And it's got a, a nearly 14,000 foot runway. And a, a kind of a fun fact about the runway is that it was an alternate location for uh, landing the uh, space shuttle if they needed to for, for some crazy reason. Now, if you zoom out from Plattsburgh Air Force Base, um, all around upstate New York, and several towns in Vermont um, to the north and uh, in New York to uh, towns to the south and west of Plattsburgh, there were these uh, missile silos that were built. And when they were built, they were basically built out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, They had long access roads that uh, usually were called missile base road or something similar. And they were built on like a... um, somewhere between five and 20 acres worth of land. Um, and you basically c- couldn't see a whole lot about it um, from from the air. It just kind of looked uh, like a big cement pad. There wasn't a whole lot above. Um, and back in 2017, when I was doing some research for uh, these silos, I came across a website and I, I read about the silos. There's lots of web, great websites about the silos. Um, and one of them being a, a New York State History Museum website. And basically, um, their website says uh, Atlas Missiles 1961, 12 Atlas F ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Squadrons, the 556th Strategic Missile Squadron, became operational uh, 1 October 1961 at Plattsburgh Air Force Base. The Atlas Fs were removed from alert on June 25th, 1965. So um, a little over four years at this point. Ten of these 12 sites are in New York State and the other two are in Vermont. The New York sites were Site 1, Champlain, uh, Site 4, Willsboro, Site site 5, Lewis, Site 6, All Sable Forks, Site 7, Riverview, Site 8, Redford, Site 9, Danamora, which is also um, 
where the uh, the Great Prison Break was. Uh, and Site 10, Brainerdsville, Site 11, Ellenberg Depot, and Site 12, Moores. There were two others that were in Vermont, um, and I, I, I'm not recalling the uh, towns at this moment, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, I believe sites two and three were the ones that were in Vermont. So um, the thing here was that if you read it and you just kind of glance over this, there it had some information, but not a whole lot. But there's a very interesting sentence here that always caught my eye, but I was never sure what it meant. Um, on this website, after it's talking about um, that these operation were operational for a short period, they were decommissioned in 1965, and these sites were the first of the super hardened missile silos built to withstand a 200 pound per square inch blast. Now that is um, normal for uh, missile silos. The next sentence had always piqued my interest, and I and this is where I'm going in this episode. Uh, there was one reported missile silo in the Saranac Lake area, which was not listed in official records. Now, for those of you who don't know, the town of Saranac Lake is in the middle of the Adirondack Mountains. It's way out in the middle of nowhere. Here's a picture of New York State. I'm going to try to put it up and center it. Um, Saranac Lake is a tiny town in the middle of the mountains. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful spot. There are lakes all around it, very small town. And um, it, there's a lot of winter tourism there. It's known as an all America city, very beautiful place to go. Um, but it's not some place that is anywhere remotely located uh, near Plattsburgh Air Force Base. It's, it's about an hour west of Plattsburgh Air Force Base through the mountains. Now, if you're talking 1960s, there were no major highways built at that point in the area, early 1960s. The um, major interstate was built in 1965, I believe, and they, they connected it um, all the way up to the, the border in Canada. But the town of Saranac Lake itself is very, very isolated compared to where all the other missile silos were um, east of there. So one of the things that I wanted to bring up was this circle that happened all around Plattsburgh Air Force Base of the 12 silos. There's a, uh, if you go to atlasmissilesilo.com, you can see where the locations were. Um, and again, none of them were near Saranac Lake at all. So I'm wondering... Where did that came from? Where did that, that sentence, there is one reported in Saranac Lake area not listed in official records. That has been something that has been in the back of my mind for years. Why put a sentence like that on a New York State Military Museum website? Now, years go by and I completely forget about this, this story. And one of the things that happened to me recently and I and I I not going to tell the whole story because um just because of the person that told me this story but there was a story that was told to me recently about a um the possibility of an underground bunker in Saranac Lake and that cued my mind thinking about what I read here now the story came from a very credible person who probably the most credible person that I know, who spoke of um, a particular person who went to this town as a, a uh, worker for the U.S. government um, and walked into a local store and then went, on, went took an elevator down to an underground bunker. Now, the story didn't go very far from that, um, but it piqued my interest enough to start researching it a little bit. This is where I'm going to have some fun, okay? So this is where um, my research tells me that this didn't exist, okay? That this this was just a false story, and it was just sort of local lore, maybe an old wife's tale or something like that. And I wanted to see what would happen if I started looking into this. And because in the past, when I have looked into something like this, 
I have come across some truths to certain things. And if you go back and listen to episode 64, 65, 66, you'll, um, you'll actually hear if you, and, and, um, this is where I should tell you that, um, episode 64, um, I did on the Lewis missile silo in, in, um, Lewis, New York, which is a fascinating story in itself. And, um, I, that's the episode that I, I, I took off of YouTube, um, because the, um, the story behind it was that it was sold in secret to a department of defense contractor. And, um, currently what they're doing there is they are training, training, um, Navy seals, uh, repelling down in the silo. The silo has apparently been blocked off. It's, uh, been apparently security has been upgraded. That silo in particular is brand new. Um, I pulled that, that episode off of YouTube. If you'd like to, to, to take a listen to it, let me know and I'll send it to you. Uh, MRP tech reviews at gmail.com. There was a lot of information that I had and I, that's one of my favorite episodes. Um, but I took it down because of, of some of the things that I said in that episode, um, I was a little nervous of, of some of the things that I said in that episode. And it's a fascinating story though. So I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but going on, um, I, I wanted to have some fun, uh, with some local history, local cold war history. And so I started to research the possibility that an underground bunker might exist in this little town in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, so bear with me as I have some fun with this. And the point of this is, uh, don't be afraid to research stuff about your local area because you never know what you're going to come across. Okay. So, um, we're talking about Plattsburgh international airport. We're talking about the missile silos that have been built now missile. As I mentioned, these missile silos were in, com- in compared to today's, um, mon- uh, you know, uh, economy 15 to $18 million worth of. Uh, to build a silo. Now, right away, that's a major red flag. You do not hide a missile silo that costs $18 million, in my opinion. Maybe you can, but I've never obviously seen anything like that. So because when you look at them uh, from the sky, it's quite obvious that it's a missile silo. All right. In fact, Um, some of the local silos here, uh, one of them in particular has actually been rebuilt into a home directly on top of where the, the doors opened, uh, a house was built and I'm showing this on the, um, on the live, um, not the live video, but I'm showing this on the enhanced video that will be up on YouTube. Basically you have an entire house built on top of it. You go down a set of stairs and my father has actually been in this particular silo. Um, he installed a satellite dish for the, the owner at the particular time. Go down a set of stairs, you're in the launch control center. You go down another uh, uh, set of stairs to the next living area and the, the underground tunnel to the silo itself that has not been restored is still there. Um, and so you can still walk through the blast doors, th- that type of thing. It's a very interesting um, and fascinating story that somebody actually built a house right on top of the uh, silo and the, and the silos are 185 feet deep, um, where the missiles were actually being stored. So that's, it's crazy. And, I, and I've always wanted to visit this place. And in fact, I tried to visit this place, but the, the current people that are living there are, are renting this particular house. They don't like to be bothered a whole lot, but, um, just fascinating. It's actually, the driveway is actually a runway that you can, you can fly in and you can land there as well. Um, going back to 2017, I was actually able to visit a, one of these missile silos. Okay. And, um, I visited site one in Champlain where I met, uh, not only the land on the, the man who owned the property, who, um, happens to work for the, um, Red Cross, I believe, um, and he travels all around the world doing really great things. Um, but I also met a, an Atlas missile silo expert who travels all around the country visiting these old sites and um, probably the um, most uh, knowledgeable person that I have ever talked to about missile silos. So basically, um, there's not about much above ground, but you uh, have a, a doorway that leads to a stairway that you walk directly down underground and, um, you, you come up to 
all sorts of really great um, things right away. You go deep underground, about 40 feet or so, come to a blast door, and um, just the uh, sheer amount of concrete that went into this thing is unbelievable. The blast doors for the silos, I believe they're 150,000 pounds each, the two double doors. Um, so we're talking some serious things. There's escape hatches um, that were for the crew working on the silos if they needed to um, escape for any reason they had a hatch. Now, the escape hatch was filled with about four tons of sand. Now, the story goes with that, that in the event of a, new, uh, a near hit, that that sand would would instantly turn to glass. And uh, what they would have to do um, from underneath is pull, pull a latch and the rest of the sand would fall inside. They would then climb up a ladder and they had a sledgehammer that they would use to um, hit their way through this escape hatch to be able to get out after a, um, after a, a near direct hit. So sort of a comical looking back because if you had a direct hit you're probably not going to want to get out anyway um so it was a fascinating trip to um see i'm just kind of scrolling through some of these pictures and these pictures are on my website you have to dig for them a little bit but um we did go deep under to the underground to the silo and we were able to actually look down in the the missile silo itself which was filled with about i would say 80 to 100 feet of water and um so the point is that i guess i'm getting at is these things aren't something that can be hidden in in any just any old place um especially these older atlas missiles um so the sentence that I read going back to now, there is one reported in the Saranac Lake area, not a fist, uh, listed on official records, just didn't make any sense to me. Um, these silos were all over the news. They were something that was well established. Everybody knew about them. Local miners helped build them. I mean, everybody, uh, who was everybody sort of knew that they were in the area. Now they're sort of being forgotten about. And that's one of the saddest things is, is um, because the air base is closed. These were decommissioned in 1965. They've sort of gone into ruin. I mean, they, all they do, all they are are cesspools of contaminated water at this point for the most part. And people have bought them for really cheap and tried to do things with them. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's, they just have fallen into disrepair. So I started doing some research and I wanted to find out exactly how these were built and I wanted to find out what it is that um, sort of went into building them. Because if you're going to build a silo out not listed on official records, there's got to be uh, something that can can make this happen. Um, so I started looking into the geology of the, the ground in the area and um, through the Atlas missile expert that I met, he sent me the Army Corps engineer, Army Corps of Engineers um, write up on the studies that they did leading up to the silos being built. Now, bore holes were drilled everywhere. And um, what was interesting to me is that the boreholes were drilled to test the soil in locations for missile silos. And it seems to me by the documentation that they had these locations planned out from the very beginning. Uh, they were, um, they sort of went in and they did these, these borehole tests in, in sort of secret and they didn't say that they were going to put missile silos in, but everybody knew that they were going and everybody knew that there was a possibility the silos were going to be built. And what I found was interesting is looking at the documentation, and I don't have the exact page here, um, but looking at the, the documentation, um, it seems like just about any type of, of ground was used to build these silos. I mean, there was all sorts of mixed, um, mixed soil, every possibility under the sun. So that really didn't um, help my search very much. Now, one of the things as I, I, I did this, and I'm having trouble with um, one of my screens here. So um, if you are listening on Discord right now, I can't see um, 
what if anybody is, is asking questions at this point. So I'm going to try and um, and and um, do this here so that I can pull up my Discord screen. Okay, so all right. One of the things that I found was that there are there's so much information that you can find. Um, talking about the silos, one of the funny stories that were mentioned is that the, uh, you know that the silos were not going to create uh, attention for the area. Um, that it wasn't going to make the area a target for, um, for, uh, Russia. Um, it's a well-known fact at this point in time that absolutely, um, the Plattsburgh Air Force Base was a huge target for Russia. So it's all these funny stories that I came across, uh, researching things. And there's a whole list of, uh, the timeline of official documentation as well as community interaction, uh, is very well documented. So the idea of a um, one being off record, an, a missile silo being off record, is is just something that I didn't think was was possible. And so then I started thinking, um, what else could it be? And so uh, I started researching other Cold War type bunkers. I've been along the coast of the U.S. and seen um, you know the World War II bunkers that are built that are still there today on some beaches in New Jersey. Um, so, so these bunkers, when they're built, they're still last, they, they last forever, even though they're not being used and, and they've sort of been gone into disrepair. So I started researching all sorts of things and, um, some, some local historians I reached out to, I asked questions on, um, what could this possibly be? And, uh, reached out to the Atlas missile ex- expert who, uh, then went onto a database of um, abandoned um, military defense sites, and he couldn't find anything there. So what we're we're trying to do is narrow down what is the what is the likelihood of of this actually being there in this little small small town in the middle of nowhere. I have two corroborating stories. I have um, one person telling me their relative swears by it. Um, that, that there was a, something there. And then I have this New York State History Museum. And so I reached out to all sorts of um, different people and trying to come across whatever I might come across. And, and um, people are telling me it could be a communications bunker, that AT&T had built communications bunkers across the U.S. Uh, that were nuclear-hardened um, some people said it could have been a storage depot or a shipping um, sort of transfer point for the military. And I started researching things, and um, the info that I had was that it was located right in the downtown area. And that just did not make sense to me at all, why something would be in the downtown area. So I started researching other Cold War stories about underground bunkers in downtown areas. And oddly enough, one of the ones that I came across was, a, 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 funny enough, it was a, a, an underground bunker called the um, Chen, and I'm going to butcher this name, so I'm sorry, uh, Tangansky Protected Command Point in Moscow, Russia. It looks like an everyday building. Um, you can look this up on YouTube, T-A-G-A-N-S-K-Y protected command point. Um, it looks like an everyday building. Um, you walk in the building, you go down, um, underground and there's a huge underground bunker there. Now what happened there is they built these underground bunkers through the subway system and nobody had any idea that these underground bunkers were even there. Neighbors didn't know the townspeople didn't know, uh, nobody knew they were there. So it was built in secret. So I went back to the map of the Saranac Lake area and I sort of looked all around and I I did all sorts of um, down the rabbit hole things. So in the downtown area of Saranac Lake, there's a huge hotel. Uh, I I was doing research for like the Greenbrier Hotel um, out in Virginia that has an underground bunker. Was it possible the Saranac Hotel um, had anything like that. It didn't seem likely. Um, the other 
uh, thing that I happen to research is the New York State Armory that's in town that happened to close just a few years ago. Behind that, there was all sorts of wildlife mountainous area. Uh, there's also um, several tuberculosis um, uh, recovery um, housing that was built for the big tuberculosis crisis back in the day. They found Saranac Lake was a cold environment, so it helped anyone with tuberculosis. And behind those uh, was also mountainous terrain. But I just wasn't finding any particular place that was in the downtown area that um, that was able to have anything even remotely possible to this. Um, and there is a government building in the downtown area and several other people have told me if it's going to be anywhere, uh, it's going to be the government building in the downtown area. It just wasn't, I, I didn't have the right resources to, to learn about this. Um, so I started researching, um, through the New York state historic, um, newspapers online. And I started researching mines in the area because some old mines out West have been turned into bunkers. I started researching caves in the area. And this is where the story kind of takes a turn for <laughs> something completely new and different. Um, I came across a 1909 article of a, um, Captain Elmer Thomas from 1909, was hiking in the mountains and apparently found a cave which he thought was comparable in size to Mammoth Cave. Now, um, he said he would go through um, entrances into the cave. He would rappel down uh, with 1,000-foot um, chambers leading to 500-foot chambers, and he'd have to navigate through um, many different chambers in this cave. And I thought, okay, here we go. I might be onto something. Now, what was really interesting is that it was sort of forgotten about for a long time, and nobody knew about this giant cave that was right near this town of Saranac Lake. Um, so I came across a website that I was not very sure if it was legit, and I and I um, and it talked about the the Mammoth Adirondack Cave found in 1909. So I went to um, historic. New York State uh, newspaper articles and was able to look up the county that this is in. And um, sure enough, there are articles from the New York Times. Um, there are many, many different articles talking about this discovery of this cave uh, in the Adirondacks that was on a mountain that was called W Mountain, and um, which was later renamed to Haystack Mountain. Now, the cave itself was later they did studies in the 60s i believe and they weren't even sure if they were on the right mountain uh, they did find a cave but it wasn't nearly as um as exciting as it was as actually led to believe now this 1909 article um was actually disputed by locals and the locals actually said, Oh, we've been going there for years. You know, we've been at least 20 years. We've been, we've, we know where that cave is. Um, and we've been going there for years and years and years. And the story said that these men would, would take torches in the cave and they would actually tie fishing line, um, in and, 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 uh, reel it out into the cave so that when their torch, they would go in as far as they could in the cave until their torches went out. And then they would use the, they would, um, uh, find their way back out by using this rope or fishing line or whatever it was. And, uh, so it's just a kind of an interesting story that this cave did exist. And, um, sure enough, just west of, of, um, uh, or excuse me, just east of Saranac Lake, there is actually a um, a mountain that was called W Mountain that is now called uh, Haystack Mountain. And um, the story of the cave was kind of true. So that was kind of fascinating that I was, I was searching for an underground bunker and um, then I was searching for underground mines. And then um, all of a sudden I found this massive cave that, um, apparently had been forgotten about. Not many people know about it. Um, now I'm an avid hiker, um, and I know, um, uh, a particular person who I've had on this show that is a, uh, uh, a cave certified cave rescue, um, person. I, I don't know the exact term for it. He didn't know about the cave. 
uh, until we did more research and found right where this cave is supposedly going to be. So that is going to be for another day. We are, um, we've taken several drives out to the location at this point in time. And, um, before everything sort of hit, um, within the last week or so of all the terrible things going on around the area, um, we're actually planning on a, a spring sort of hiking trip out to this cave and possible, possibly, uh, do some exploring just for the fun of it. Um, because it is there. Um, it's got a different name. I'm not going to mention it on air at this point in time. Um, because I want to go to it first. Um, so anyway, this story, as I, the day that I, that I learn about the, um, the caves, I've reached out to, there's a, a Plattsburgh Air Force Base, um, museum and the Plattsburgh Air Force Base Museum, um, I asked them about the possibility of this, this underground silo. And basically the guy said, um, you know, we have people that worked at the silos, all 12 of them, they've come in, talked to us, and not once have any of them said anything about a silo in Saranac Lake. So I was pretty convinced that it had nothing to do with the missile silos, that this, if it did exist, that um, it was not military related. So one of the things that I came across and I'm going to try and I, I've been having an issue with um, one of my screens here. Um, and I'm sorry that um, the screen has been a little bit off. I, I've had an issue with my laptop screen here. Um, one of the things that I was said was that it's basically BS. So there's not a, there's not much of a story to it. And until I got a message from a local historian and the story said, hi, Matt, thanks for getting in touch. I'm not familiar with any missile silos here in the Saranac Lake area, but I am going to do a little asking around. What I suspect you might be thinking of is the possibility of an old storage depot that is here and um, during World War II it was a storage facility here in the village that had top secret clearance post World War II during the Cold War. It was originally a parking garage and it was converted into a cold storage archival storage area. The facility was operated by the Lincoln Warehouse Company at the time who went on to open Iron Mountain. It held copies of the primarily uh, microfilm of the records of the New York Stock Exchange, major oil companies, companies with the Pentagon contracts, and it allegedly held the crown jewels of Luxembourg at one point. There's a bunch more information on our website, um, but that's definitely the closest thing that we can think of. Now, I'm going to pull up the screen here, and um, it's actually called the Towsley Storage Building, which is fascinating. It's right in the downtown area, uh, also known as Madden's Building. And um, it's an old parking garage. The building is still there today, and it's still being used as a storage facility today. Now, uh, from what I gather, none of the secret information is being stored there anymore. Uh, but what happens is... Uh, uh, when Iron Mountain near New York City was built, all of that information was then um, given to Iron Mountain, and that's where it's stored now. So it's a fascinating story of local history. Um, and in fact, when you go into this building, um, you walk in from the front, you go through the, there's, there's a few local shops in the front, you walk in the back of the building, and there is an elevator that you take to this underground storage area. And it is apparently wide enough for two cars to be parked side by side. And it's actually super interesting um, to know about because I, I, I would assume that, you know, a lot of people in the Saranac Lake area might know about this, but um, living an hour away, I knew nothing about this whatsoever. And um, you can go to the village of Saranac Lake, which has got a lot of stores and shops. You could walk right by this, never even know it's there. Um, so there actually is an underground bunker uh, that was a storage depot uh, that was had top secret clearance during the Cold War era. Um, and 
that just fascinates me. Um, and oddly enough, I showed earlier that um, that government building, um, the storage facility is actually right next door to that that government building in the Saranac Lake area. So um, it's it's all of the um, the the markers point to this being exactly what I was looking for uh, from that. Uh, one reported not being in official records in Saranac Lake, um, and the the co- it corroborated with the story of of a few other locals that I've heard. Um, I talked to town historians; they said they've heard similar stories about the possible thirteenth silo or uh, something else. And this just makes sense to w- what it is. This this building, the Towsley Storage Building, was um, also nuclear hardened, believe it or not. So it was able to withstand a nuclear blast fascinating, fascinating story of um, Cold War era happenings um, in in my area. Now, the idea here is this is a story I just wanted to share with you all. Um, Number one, because I'm a big Cold War era buff. And number two is if you have things that you're interested in, whether it's local history, whether it's military history, or whether it's just something you've always been curious about. It, now, look, when I did this, I was I was very skeptical that there was this secret underground bunker in the Saranac Lake area. Um, not because I don't believe that there are secret underground bunkers. There obviously are. Um, a lot of the Cold War era stuff has been decommissioned at this point in time. A lot of... of uh, communications bunkers from that area are decommissioned. So a lot of these things are no longer being used. So um, what I wanted to find out is where the truth comes from from stories like this. And the, the, the idea here is you have to think outside the box when you're doing research for a specific project. And when you are trying to unravel stories from the past that have been forgotten about. You have to broaden your perspective a little bit, even if you, you kind of go down that crazy route just a little bit to see what the possibilities are. And by expanding and, and really process of elimination, you can find out what the truth is. Now, what started for me looking for a 13th missile silo that was off official record led me to some fascinating things, okay, about my not only my area, but just about the Cold War in general. Um, I came across that underground bunker in Russia that just is a cool story. I mean, nobody knew about it for over 50 years. The thing to me that was, was really awesome was the discovery of the underground cave that... Um, uh, his name was Elmer Thomas in 1909 that talked about it. And um, that underground cave is something that a lot of people don't know about in this area. I mean, it's out in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, uh, unless you actually went to it and saw it, you wouldn't really know what it was. Now, is, is it as big as Mammoth Cave? I doubt it. Um, there have been several expeditions that went to it. There are It's a very large scattered cave system, but, um, you know, uh, oddly enough, since then, I've seen um, a documentary on Man- Mammoth Cave, um, which is over 400 miles long at this point. So, but back in 1909, it was a different story. You have to think about the time period. And this person thinking they discovered a cave, um, obviously they had different technology back then, didn't have the lights that we have today. So they could have um, very easily thought the cave went on for a long time. Um, so, by researching things, you know, and thinking outside the bunch, bunch from going from missile silos to communications bunkers, to underground bunkers, to abandoned mines, later to caves, just to see what the possibility was and actually researching the geology of the area using uh, USGS um, tools, um, uh, topographic maps, uh, ground penetrating radar, uh, LIDAR scans of the area. I really went pretty deep in this. I'm skipping over a lot, um, but it was fascinating to to see where this all kind of led up to. And what I didn't do was just t- trust one person's word um, on something. And so I had these stories, um, and I've heard from multiple sources that there was something there in the area, but um, certain people didn't want to talk about it. 
um, to people saying that it was complete and utter garbage, that there was no proof of it whatsoever, uh, that it was just an old wives' tale, and the the wide range of everything in between really led me in a, in a fascinating twist turn, uh, you know, for for weeks and. I had actually came across this Towsley storage building uh, a few weeks before I realized what it was. I was on a website and I, I just, I, I was briefly reading about it and I didn't know what it was. Um, but after uh, reaching out to the, um, some historians in the area that finally I was able to talk to the person that was in the know. And, um, I tried to set up a tour to go in this building, but the building is still being used today and they're not, um, they're not, um, st- properly staffed enough to be able to, to, um, um, bring us through, which is kind of sad. Uh, at the same time, I, I was really hoping to, uh, be able to get a tour through that and share it with all of you. But, um, they, uh, declined the, the, um, offer to, uh, I was actually offered to pay them to, to, um, give a tour and, um, maybe someday I'll, I'll keep working on it. But the fact is that there was a story there was rumor, there was everything in between. And if you have something like this, use all available research options. Don't just go on one website's well, terminology um, or or just believe in a story that somebody told you. Um, you can use things like Google Earth. You can use things like USGS. You can US th- use things like um, New York State historic websites. I'm sure every state or country out there has historic website, uh, newspapers online that you can just scan through. It's very simple. You just type in the, the uh, date range and it'll search keywords. It's fascinating. The stuff that I came across. So I don't know if this came across as interesting or not, but this is cold war story, cold war era stories from, from my local area. And it's kind of sad to see these old relics that are just wasting away in the ground. And um, now the Army Corps of Engineers has come to some of them and cleaned up this, this, these silos. And it's just sad to see that um, so much money went into these things. They were used for two years, and then they just filled up with water for the next 60 years. Um, kind of sad. So... If you have questions about this, I would love to um, to answer any questions. You can send me an email, mrptechreviews at gmail.com. I would love to um, answer any of your questions. If you want to check out some of the older episodes, send me a message and I'll send you a link to um, that uh, episode 64. And I would, I would love to share it. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Again, that episode is, that's another episode, um, 65 and 66, the other two episodes were about my tour through the the missile silos and the missile silos in my area in general. 64 um, was when I came across some concerning newspaper articles about one of the missile silos, and um, I still believe everything that I said in that episode. Um, I've, I've, I've... I uh, sort of caused a little bit of a storm for with, with that episode. So um, I, I, I pulled it off YouTube just just for the sake. It's actually still on YouTube. It's just listed as private. Um, so I, I'll share it with you if you're interested. Um, send me an, You got to send me an email, though, and then I'll, I'll get that out to you. So uh, thanks so much for listening, guys. I'm sorry it's been a, kind of a crazy couple of weeks, um, crazy couple of months for me. And um, I really do want to get back to recording more frequently. Hopefully now that I was sick this last week, I'll be up and running uh, every week with a new show. And uh, lots lots of other fun things to talk about. So thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time.